Okay, we're at the Save Water Philip Johnson Equilibrium site at the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show, and we're very fortunate today. A really exciting part of this site is that we're trying to create some visions for the future about how we can manage water differently. And we have a rain garden on the side of the road, and we have the ambassador for rain gardens, Jane Edmondson, on behalf of Melbourne Water, who's here to be able to talk to us about them. Um, Michael, I guess what I'm thinking is that it's, being, it's doing two things. Equilibrium to me means a balance, and that's what Philip's done. It's a balance between be being a beautiful landscape and a sustainable landscape. And that's what a rain garden is all about, isn't it? And when you say rain garden, people might not know quite what that is. But I always think when you have a big flash flood or even just a very heavy downpour of rain, all that rain gets washed from your roof into your tank, if you've got one, or it goes down the stormwater drains into your, your outlet and straight into a creek or a stream or way down into the Port Phillip Bay. And it's whooshing all the poisons and all the toxins and all the rubbish and pollution isn't that what's happening? And it needs those huge pipes too. Yes, you know, you need, exactly. Because there's this great constant surge of water of that water. comes through. And so what a rain garden is doing is just slowing things down. And it can be a built-up garden that has your stormwater pipe you know, building into that so that you're collecting a bit of that rainwater and slowing it down. Or it can be just a simple garden bed like you've got here that's under the ground and it's of sand so that it filters very well. So you're actually slowing the rate of the water down and you're slowing, well, you're collecting a lot of those poisons that would just rush into the bay. Is that yeah, not right? Yeah, very much so. Mm. And the thing that excites me about what Philip's done is this is part of that vision for the future. This is a streetscape, but instead of being mm. tarmac and a concrete gutter and a, and a nature strip, there's actually a garden here. So it's cleaning that stormwater yeah. and then that filtered stormwater is coming through to a little community produce garden and people can actually come together and talk about growing things. Yeah. It's a vision about how we could use water in our urban environments and you know, move away from those big pipes and that whole system, which isn't actually helping natural systems at all. So, and it, and it, so. it, it can be such a, uh, an important thing that individuals can get a hold of, because gardeners can do this. You're saving water, you're creating a nice little garden bed where perhaps there wasn't a garden bed before, and it's just doing such a lot of good for our, env our environment just to stop that storm water just rushing and being wasted. So if people want to do this at home, where mm. do they need to go? Uh, Melbourne Water have got a very good website. They've got some very good brochures and that kind of thing available. Okay. But go for rain gardens. There's something a little bit different, but you concentrate on it and I think it'll be really worthwhile. I spoke to a bloke yesterday and he talked about functional design. Yes. And I thought, isn't that clever? Because yeah. this is something that looks beautiful, yeah. but it also works. Yeah. It's also making the whole natural system work a little bit better. And Michael, it's happening not just in Australia, not just in Melbourne, but it's all over the world. Like America is very big on collecting storm water. And even some little councils around our fair state are getting right into it too. So it's really the thing of the future. People have thought about harvesting water with rain tanks and underground bladders and all sorts of things like that. But this is the thing of the future that I think will make a real difference to a lot of people. And that's terribly important too, because when you talk about councils, councils are made up of people. Yeah. So when someone, when I think people need to talk to their councils about ray guns and how they can be incorporated. Mm. Have we covered all we need to cover? I think so. Jane, yes. that's been terrific. Thanks so much for making the time. Good really on appreciate you. Appreciate that. And, and save water. Yes, absolutely. <laughs>